It's a great day to flex your freedom. I'm your host, Barb Allen. Very, very excited to be here today with somebody I have massive respect for. I'm happy to reconnect with and on a topic that I am fascinated by. And you all honestly should be too, because I feel like it is only now we are starting to understand the ripple effects of social media and the internet and all the access that we have on our kids, on our families and on our health and all of that. And what is this like 15 plus years that it's really been a mainstream part of our lives. And now we are, uh, this wave is coming at us of a whole new level of technology that is going to have the same level of impact, if not greater as the internet and Wi-Fi had. And just like social media and all these people, just like we all jumped into social media and we're all blind, just like still people are using TikTok and swear by it. Um, there's the AI that is out now has potential for great harm or great good, depending on how it's used, who uses it, how it's applied, how it's monitored and all of that. So it's something that we should all have learned our lessons from with the with the aftermath of social media and internet access that we're experiencing. I hope we go into this with a little more caution, but I am seeing people jump right off cliffs like a bunch of lemmings without even thinking about it. So that is why I am really excited to have an opportunity to sit down today with Eric Post. Eric Post, we're going to get into his story, his background here, a little bit of what qualifies him to speak on this topic. Um, and plus, he's got some other exciting things coming up that he's working on that we definitely want to be a part of. Eric Post, thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing and for taking the time to sit down with us today. You guys are the first ones I said yes to to talk about this topic. I, I'm genuinely excited. Wow. Your audience is the type of audience that I want to talk to, that I want to resonate with. And so thank you for having me on for sure. Yeah, awesome. That's that makes me happy to hear. Thank you. We do have we do have a banging community. It's built up. It's been a been a bitch to grow, man, but the but totally worth it. Um so let's let's get through your background for a little bit. Talk a little bit about what your history is, your experience and, you know, what qualifies you to speak and 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 talk to people and teach us a bit more about this project about AI and then we're going to get into what you're doing with it, which is really exciting. Yeah. So first of all, I love the way you phrased that, but this is one of those technologies. And one of the things I'm seeing in the market that's actually, I don't get annoyed very often, but I'm getting a little bit annoyed because people are acting as if they are the expert all of a sudden and shit, they've only been playing with it for a couple of months. Right. And right. there's not a lot of humility in this, no different than what we experienced with the lockdowns and pandemics. And we're in mm -hmm. unprecedented times and we were then too. And what we saw was weak people trying to gain control, trying to act like they had all the best answers. And I'm like, these are unprecedented times. How do you have all the answers, right? We need to, we need to follow people that are asking the right questions. They're asking the deep questions that, that, that help us all understand things better together. And so I just want to start off with that, that I am positioning myself. Yeah, I have done a bunch of work and I have done a bunch of research and I have, I am implementing and I'm starting a new company and I've, you know, I do tend to be on the cutting edge of understanding things, but these are my opinions and these are my opinions as I understand them now. And I just think that the, th the way that society is looking at this whole thing, they're asking the wrong question. And the question they're asking of AI is how can it make my life easier or how can I get it to do stuff for me? Right. Mm -hmm. And that initial reaction wasn't a surprise from a society that's full of diet pills and six minute abs, you know what I mean? And a quick quick fix for things, right? But I think if we're really talking about technology that truly is, I believe is far, will have a far greater impact on our us and our society than the internet, than cellular communication, than Wi-Fi, than social media. I'm talking like, I don't know how many exponential fold greater impact than that. So if I'm right, or if, or if people out there are thinking that in the same way, then why aren't we asking this technology, how can it make us better? How, how can we be better, more experts in our thing, or more professional or more knowledgeable? Instead of how can it make our life easier? If we got a tool like this, then I think that's a better question to be, start to start off the conversation with. That's that's why I kind of dumped in here. Yeah, I I love it. And you were you were the first person that I saw throw out there like, hey, heads up, guys, like not to be this doomsday or anything, but based on, you know, historically speaking, shouldn't we all be paying a little more attention to this? I am actually really surprised to see the people that I am seeing immediately pounce on this and sort of like little patronizing towards people. Like if I put a little question out there, like, Hey, are we sure that we want to use, you know, for me, it was the first thing that came to my mind was the, 
the impact that this will have on, I feel like it's going to even diminish the human touch even more than it is. I feel like we're going to lose a little more of the human connection that we've already lost some more of without, if people just instantly like, like who's writing what chat GPT and Jasper, who's writing is, is that writing? I feel like, so for me, that was the first layer of like, Hey, maybe we should like look into this more. And then I started peeling it back a little. I'm like, Holy shit. Like, why is everybody just just saying, hey, join, sign up for this. And the really the patronizing responses I got or comments I got from people surprised me because they're like, well, what are you threatened by it? You think that, you know, if you're not a good enough writer that you think you're going to be replaced? Like they took it as if I was saying, oh, this is going to be bad for me because I'm going to mm. have less writing opportunity or whatever. So yeah. what are, like, what what was the first thing that triggered some sort of, Oh, hey, I should look into this for you. Yeah. I, because I saw that it was going to clearly redefine what we value in terms of the human con or the the human value in a capitalist society, right? In business, in commerce, in in connection that way. It, it's going to redefine really what the value of the human being is versus what the value of a machine is. And, and you know, I look at my kids and I do most of my things in business or or even in hobbies as a result of understanding that what we don't learn from, we repeat, what we repeat becomes our legacy and what's our legacy becomes our kid's reality. And, and I'm not okay with just sitting back and watching this being ushered in and, and being submissive to it. And, and I believe that we really need to be strong to understand that if we don't grab it by the leash and control it, it's going to grab us by the leash and control us. And really what I'm seeing so much of what people running to is they're saying, hey, chat GBT, act as an expert marketer. I want you to do this for me. Not realizing that's just making them irrelevant and replaceable one task delegated at a time to this AI. Instead of saying, hey, chat GBT, act as an expert. I'm saying, hey, make me the expert. If I was an expert in this, what were some things that I consider, right? So it's just a positioning thing that I think we're kind of getting wrong and that I'm trying to launch my company on the, on the back of that one simple thing, leverage, leverage to, to make us, um, our production, our creativity and execution faster, better, stronger, not weaker and more irrelevant. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so that's why I jumped in, you know, my past businesses was in real estate, restaurants, investing, consulting, health and wellness, uh, both online. And you've built I've had massive success in those industries. I want to point yeah. out to people too, you've built significant <laughs> success just because you're not out there posting all your you know the the wealth and success and for and all that that you built you know you're not you're not a loud successful person right you just live your life kind of quietly so i just want to emphasize for people that eric is um he's the real deal he's built his companies hard work big impact big Thank reach you. he just focuses on other things in term when he when he's out there on social but um yeah I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, it's something, you know, I think our gross gross sales and and is over $4 billion in cumulative portfolio of stuff that I've worked on. And, yeah. you know, that that comes from an understanding of, of people. I, I think one of my only gifts is really understanding people. And I've spent my entire life dedicated to understanding myself. And if I understand myself, I can help understand other people. And if I can understand them, I can help them. And so understanding people and the trajectories that people in society are on and compared to this technology is why I said, hey, let's let's do something. I'd been taking some time off working on a documentary and, and other projects. And and when Which I saw going this to kick be off. Phenomenal, by the way. I'm very yeah. excited for that to come out. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, me too. I saw the first, you know, bit of it the other day and, and it was yeah. exciting. But but even the lessons that I learned during that project. I'm directly putting here, you know, the things I learned about the way people interact with each other and and how people act one way when it's convenient, another way when it's inconvenient. And mm -hmm. I saw some of those just general trends of the way society's head. I'm like, okay, this is a technology that we can use to actually make a big impact right now. And I'm focusing primarily on the business community. And the reason why I'm focusing on the business community is because I believe that one of the problems in this society and our culture is that we're too reliant on other people for our income. There's a there's a kind of a trend to daddy government, take care of me and do these things. And Mr. Employer, take care of me. And I'm going to demand certain expectations. And I think financial autonomy is really important. And when you have that, you have power. 
And you have control over your mind, your body, and your spirit when you're not reliant on somebody else for income. So I really want to focus on the business community and helping people that want to start a business, run a business, own a business, you know, have an ongoing uh, business right now that they just want to expand it or think better or really dominate their competition. He can now faster than ever before. So that's why I'm going to focus on AI specifically with that community. All right. So let's talk about it then. You started, a, is it a program, a website? Who's, I don't know how to pronounce it. H-U-Z-I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Hoozy. So, so <laughs> what I, what I basically did, and I'm not here to promote the business. I just want to explain the thought process. Well, I would actually like to promote it a little bit and talk about it because I love people to check it out for themselves and, and see if they want to get involved with it. You know, that's the whole point of having. Yeah, this we're system. launching. It's in development right now. Um, I'm starting to take yeah. a you know, list for people that want to beta test this thing for me. But yes, the, the, the premise was if I look at a business and I look at all my past successful businesses or the ones that I've consulted with that are really successful, I look for all the, the trends, right? I look for, I don't look for cause and effect so much, but I look for what goes with what. Okay. So if I have a successful business, what goes with that? What are the different departments that they have that are very successful? What are the characteristics? What are the traits? What are the mindsets? So I did a bunch of research and kind of broke it all down to identify these six main departments of a business. And in this business, to be good in that department, and just to make it real clear, it's like operations, HR, finance, leadership, okay, sales and marketing. If you have those main categories, if you were to hire an expert, right, Barb, in your business, that's an expert CEO, as an example, what would be the qualities? What would be the leadership style? What would be the personality traits? What would be his daily activities or her daily activities? And what would be the support system that they would need to be thriving in that, in that position? And then I came with up with both AI tools and training to support that. So an individual that's in the business, you know, we're forced to use our left brain and right brain, you know, to be organized and creative, right? And it's an impossible inhuman task that business demands on its owner or creator or manager or founder. So I wanted to help round that out and support that individual by give, making them better in those individual skills. And that's why I'm launching Hoozy. That whole premise is um, instead of relying on just tools, because tools are just widgets that'll come and go. And that's what everyone's launching right now. There's like 100 new companies starting every day in the AI space. I wanted to look deeper, longer term and, and use all the AI tools to support the human being at elevating their performance instead of just delegating. And that's basically the premise of Hoozy. So what does that look like? If I'm, if I'm going to be, who, who, who is your prime, who's your ideal beta tester for this? Anybody that has it, like what, when a startup says, well, we could serve anybody. And I, and I sit on boards, I, I provide seed money funding and I invest in startup companies. When I have a founder that says, oh, you know, anybody is our customer. It's an instant red flag, right? It's like, come on, that's mm -hmm. not true. But really, when you look at the elements of business, business is business. It doesn't matter what widget you're selling or product or service you're selling. So it really is very, very a wide range of people that can serve in from a dentist to a real estate agent to, you know, a, an advertising agency. All of these things have to run their business on top of performing their business. Right. So the foundation of that is, is as such. So let's say that you run a business, you need to hire somebody. Right. Normally, you sit down, or HR person would sit down and write the job description and and you know get that posted. I think that you should use AI not just to write the job description, but to think about wow, what would be the important questions that I could ask during my interview process to to make sure that I that I extract if they have the quality and characteristics that they need to be successful in this job. What would be the best quality and characteristics? that would need to be in this job. What would, would a person with these quality and characteristics want out of a job like this so they stay long-term and become part of the team? What questions could I ask in the review process? Like you could just expand out this whole thing using AI quickly, quickly, quickly to write your policy manual, to write your training schedule, to write the social media posts, announcing the, the new addition of this employee. So it's, it's a way to think through things in a business and then actually give you the information and the steps to deploy them instantly. And that's what I think is so powerful because nothing is done in business in a silo, right? It's, it's nothing mm -hmm. is just done. Like, it, it affects everything. You have to look at how it affects the entire business and how it works in. And, and AI is just a, a tool. It's just a tool. It's the thought process behind it to use the tool properly to expand yourself is what I'm working on. What are some ways that people can even unknowingly use AI in a way that'll be detrimental to them? First of all, I think to make yourself irrelevant, like just as a, just as a uh, 
the basic life mission, and I've said this before on your podcast, but I think that comfort is the enemy of progress. And and I think that people sink, seek comfort and easy too quickly before they really elevate themselves to enjoy, truly enjoy comfort. And so I think the first thing that I can do is going to make people really lazy. And they're just going to, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And they're just going to check boxes. Oh, I need to, I need to write a blog. I've always wanted to have a blog. Now I can just have an A, I write my blog. You know, if, if I hand my dog a Ferrari, it still can't drive, right? Mm -hmm. If you hand an average marketer, an average writer AI, they're just an average marketer or an average writer with AI, right? You really need to use AI to elevate your skills, to use it better. And so it really needs to be this, this partnership, the symbiotic partnership. So the first thing, you know, that I think is going to be tempting for people is just going to make them lazy and irrelevant. And I hate to see that but it's, it's already yeah. happening. It's already happening. Yeah. Well, what are some ways that you see that a company can come in and, or just a straight up small business owner, it doesn't have to be a big company can come in and find like what aspects of AI, if I say I have a small business in my house, I don't know, say I run a hardware store or whatever in, in my yeah. town, how can I, what are some things that I would pop onto AI to, to instantly do that, to elevate my game, to help me understand things better. Like what, cause I still don't have a full understanding except for how people, except for like you said, the blog post, right? Like, Hey, and we've we experimented with it. We typed in a, a couple keywords and I wrote like a, you know, I wrote like a 500 word <laughs> post yeah. and 60% of it was usable content, Absolutely. right? Um, that was pretty incredible. But what are some ways that, that somebody can use it to elevate themselves in addition to the example you gave with the HR uh, person, um, you know, then what, in terms of what in Hoosie, what are some of the other components that you're going to be teaching and explaining to people so that they can get out in front of this and use it for themselves in a, in a good way? I, I look at it as an extension of these departments. So if you have, here's, here's the way I look at it that let's say let's use a hardware store and i love just like brainstorming here for a second a real life right, scenario yeah. and i've never owned a hardware store but i can imagine <laughs> what it would be like it, or, it, no, i don't know you, why i thought of that i yeah. just whatever it's <laughs> hometown you know good old-fashioned hardware store right corner hardware yeah. store so let's let's right. actually help somebody like that I, I love this idea um so i look at it in a couple different ways one i would look at it in, from an efficiency standpoint you know when you have a hardware store as an example you have certain hours of operation you have a, your your scheduling of your employees you have your inventory, you have your vendor management, you've got accounts payable, accounts receivable. There are certain efficiencies that if you look at just a hardware store like that, that AI could actually help dramatically. So it could evaluate your hours of operation compared to your employee schedule and give you some suggestions for staffing. You know, it could it could help you brainstorm ways to increase your social media traffic based on your small town or geographic area or, you know, the the um, the, the community around it. It could absolutely help you think more creatively in scripts to teach your um, your staff at the point of sale register in order to help upsell. It, it, I mean, really, truly, it's mind blowing. You could, you could, you could turn a bunch of data into it to talk about your inventory, and it could look for ways to save costs, right? Okay. So, in one of in one of the portals, so I'm training these different these different portals to do these sorts of things to help you think in such a way. But I don't want people to think of of especially my tool as this external tool that they're just input and output. I want them to really think of it as a way to just flesh out good ideas and expand their depths of thinking mm -hmm. and then use that to then perform the task on their own, right? To, 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 be the, to be the expert themselves, to have AI turn them into the expert, not have AI be the expert that you're just relying on. So it's it's so that so that hardware store really from marketing to operations to HR to to internal um, you know financial management to understanding the profit and loss better all of those things can be done like on my platform specifically absolutely that's pretty cool and I guess in some ways you know we are using a different version of that like how many of us just say like oh I have this pain in my side forever and you pop on WebMD and you read the information and you think it's got oh this and you self-diagnose right based on what you yeah. find and how many people of us read a headline that pops up and it's all subject to whatever the search engines feed back at you right so I, I guess in some point a lot of us are are already like poised to just jump in and we've all, we've almost been conditioned like, Oh, Hey, this is the next thing. And we're already so used to just popping online and finding anything we want and say, taking that as gospel 
that this seems like a logical next step for people uh, in, in a lot of people's heads. I think they're like, oh, well, and something about it, I think people are lending more credibility to it than even than a regular Google search, I think. It's, so uh, for me, that's another like, oh, hey, maybe we should kind of think about this. Like who's programming these these um, programs to who's determining what comes up in this in this AI search like yeah. who's it has to get it from somewhere right like so who's feeding it it, it does in a way but really like what we're talking about like with open ai as an example or or bard the google or, or the new bing launch like these are these are language models these are large language models which really all that that all that it is when i say all that it is i'm not trying to diminish the technology but really what it but, is it's just an algorithm that uses predictability to find out what word is supposed to follow the, the next word based on the context that it was given so it's it's just it's really a program of of language and yeah. and that's the crazy thing when we really look at the difference between reality and language language tends to trap people into thinking of noun verb ad, right it, it, that's how we think in, in terms of our our vision of the world but the world doesn't come separated by nouns and adjectives and verbs and whatnot so i i i do have a problem that we're getting more and more into this language and less and less with what's fucking real and tangible okay mm -hmm. but that's what the that's what the language learning models are and then what you can do with that is that you can steep it in let's say a book so for instance i have some favorite sales books i love i love um creative books i don't love books that are books about books that are about books that are just full of footnotes and there's just right, no right, original right. thoughts right but right. but really truly insightful creative books and so what i'm going to be able to do is take these books that are amazing in these different categories and train my AI models on them. So not only will it, will it be able to respond in a way that seems logical because of the language learning model, but also be grounded and rooted in real good strategy, real good techniques, real good science and data and, and um, successes, right? From, from fantastic authors and business leaders and, and, and motivational people and whatnot. So that's, that's going to be the goal for my particular platform is to go deeper you know, also with strategy for these different departments. That's wild. That's like bringing all of space onto your kitchen table, like a little bit, like just reaching yeah. out and grabbing. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, okay. Yeah. Think of it this way. I think of really there was all of the internet and then all mm -hmm. Google did was provide the portal to it. It right. just gave us access to it. That's really chat GBT for AI. It's just a portal to it. Right. So then my portal is just a, is more of a specific portal again to it. It's a layer on top of it or a layer in between. So that's all these are just simply just layers, you know, just different portals like the apps on your phone into AI. Um, but it just destroyed Google searches. Google searches are, are going to be no longer, um, you know, keyword optimization, um, you know, hashtag it's, it's all just being unraveled right now completely. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point you had um, right there. And I want to see if I understand it properly. Uh, does that mean that even people with social media platforms like Instagram or even TikTok or whatever, when they use their hashtags, do you, is, is that going to impact it? Like their yeah, reach on these platforms? I'm, this is not my opinion because this is yet to play out, right? But yeah. really, it just, it just eliminated the middleman from information. So Google, yeah. what Google did was a search engine, right? So it searched for people that would have the information and give you the options of places to go to get the information. But you're not getting the information from Google. You got to go right. to the next website that you find. Right. That's now, you're just now just going to get the information instantly. So yes. there's no more, there's no middleman. So all of information just got completely commoditized. Everybody that's withholding and selling information like recipes on their site or how to do this oh, or how yeah, to do yeah, that. Oh, yeah, I got you. Like you're using gone. people like SE, like SEO um, on a gone. website, like SEO, like, like gone. for instance, our real estate company's SEO that's been worked so hard on and built on. <laughs> so that when people yeah. type in a certain key phrase, our site comes up. That's... yeah. It's going to be like really it. challenged, but, but here's the yeah. thing, but, <laughs> so, but, in, it, yeah. you know, but, but the good thing in this yeah. is that all, if all that information just got completely commoditized, wisdom just got elevated. Yes. Right. So like, tr there's never been a time where the wisdom of what to do with the information is now right. hypercritical. So they can go on and learn how to do all this stuff and, and, and see, this is what I need to do. And they're like, but I need somebody to help me. 
Right, so, right, right. So b- that's not lost. And, and right. I think people are singing this doomsday thing, like it's replacing all people. And all. No, it's just going to elevate the people that are wise and professional and knowledgeable and experts in what they do. And it's going to it's going to just eliminate the mediocrity. Right. And so I think that, that's I, a really yeah, that's a really great way to look at it. And I've thought for a while, I'm like, I think the problem and I'm going to say especially like with adolescents and teenagers who now have all this information at the tips of their fingers that they confuse it for wisdom and knowledge and uh, on how to apply it. So I guess that could be the same thing for all of us, right? Like we pop something into chat GPT or Jasper or whatever it is. And we're like, oh, well this popped it back and I hit a few buttons and this great article came at me and I read it and posted it. So I am now an expert on it. And we've skipped all the steps in between to educate ourselves (laughs) And to kind of like stretch our brains to do that little bit of research and to dig in and ask questions. So what will set people apart is who still takes those extra steps and who still looks, I I think we're going to have to look for more opportunities to expand, to, to stretch our mental strength, like even more. Is that, is that a fair thing to say? And that's, that's primarily the premise of why I wanted to start this is, is that one is that one dynamic that if we don't, then what? Right. Right. What, what is our real value if we could just tell a, a computer to do everything for us? Yeah. If anybody can just tell a computer what to do, then, then who are you? Right. And, yeah. and that's, that's really deep. If you really stop and really it is think really about deep. it. It's so fascinating. It's like, who are you and what happens to ourselves? Like, what do we then do with our brains and how do we, try? I guess like, like we could take the elevator all the time, but why not take the stairs? Like what, yeah. you know, what happens to our bodies when we stop taking the stairs and we just hop on the elevator all the time? I think the same premise could happen to our, our, our intelligence, like our brains and our, our creativity and all that, I think. I don't know. That's where my head is going with it. Maybe that's stupid, but that's what, like, that's no, what I'm it, pulling out of it, it. It's really, it's really important. And for yeah. the first time, you know, I can see the need for universal income, not based on anything else, not based on, uh, uh, you know, a communist view or a political view at all, just from a pragmatic standpoint of how do you keep the wheel greased with people that, that aren't finding value to provide to, to society. Well, um, that to me coming from you is a huge statement. Yeah. That yeah, I can't, I'm, <laughs> that to me, that's yeah, but exploding in my brain what you just said there <laughs> a little bit because it's let's, just surprising. Let's unpack me. that so, a little bit. Yeah, I, let's unpack it. Let's know, do it. Because I've never said it in public, um, really. Yeah. I, I said it one time, I think. But you know, when I first started hearing about the the chatter about universal income or whatnot, I was like, oh man, you know, here's another socialist sort of thing, and you know, blah blah blah. Uh-huh. blah. Oh, well, now, (laughs) if we don't get this right, really, what we'll be doing, we'll be having robots and AI and stuff doing a lot of commerce, doing a lot of work for us that will need to be taxed somehow in order to pay for and supplement the people that aren't providing value. Right. And there is I can actually see a very clear path to that being absolutely necessary to keep society glued together. I don't want that to come true, but I can see that I can see that path. Okay. So, do you think that there's another path then that instead of the uni- basic universal income, do you think we could just challenge ourselves? Maybe we'll just open ourselves up to find other ways. Like maybe sort of like if I hire somebody to come clean my house, that frees me up to spend my energy doing all the other things that anybody could do. So yeah. maybe, maybe more people would be freed up to explore the things that they love doing and building that thing that they're passionate about or, or you think, I think would, this would, that the, be, would that be the preferential choice or would that be, uh, like, a not so much a preferential choice. I don't know. I'm trying to, to get this. Yeah. It's a, it's a big, it's a big, deep topic. So I'll just say this way. Yeah. I think this technology is the biggest gap creator we've ever seen. And gap creator, gap, gap creator yeah. both in income, uh, both in right. uh, you know opportunities, in in happiness, in every every right. category you can think of. I think this is a, is a huge gap creator. So people that wield this, you know, in their business in, in the in the right way to deepen and strengthen their business, are just going to dominate. The ones that wield this to try and make their business easier and to fix little band aids and to delegate stuff to it. And it's like an untrained employee telling another untrained employee what to do. There's lots of that going on. 
So, yeah. you know, right now I can already see this gap being created already between the, the, the kind of the leading edge in each industry taking off and utilizing these things uh, versus the ones that are kind of sitting back and folding their arms and being like, oh, we're just fine. You know, no big deal. It's a big yeah. deal. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. So even hearing you say this now, I can hear all the conspiracy people because there's a difference between questioning things and being a full on conspiracy theorist, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I think I think the full on conspiracy, I can hear them now saying that this is all like some master plan to weaken people and gain more control over them. And the basic universal or universal basic income would be an example of that. What, what would you say? Cause if you haven't already, have you already gotten comments like that? Have you already gotten people pushing that at you? Yeah. And I think that's important. I, I think that the pushback into this is also healthy. Um, so I'm not sitting here saying you must submit to this whole thing and, and it's here to stay. So you better accept it. And the things that other people are saying, I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying though, is positioning yourself. Positioning yourself is, is, is really important. And it doesn't matter what you believe politically. What's important is, is how are you going to make sure that you retain your time? I'm just a believer in being autonomous. I, I just, I believe in being sovereign. I believe in having a sovereign mind, a sovereign bank account, sovereign everything. So I think that you can still be sovereign and use AI, right? And I don't think those are, those yeah. are two separate things. And I do believe that that is that is maybe a misunderstanding that people have about it. That you know, if you if you plug yourself in, you're going to be lost, and you're giving up all your information and all these things. And you know, I respect I respect those opinions. Um, I just think that ship has sailed. And and so I, I'm going to instead of sitting here trying to defend myself from it, I'm going to turn it into my bitch, right? Just to yeah, be frank about I it. I love that. All right, so I this is actually such an interesting conversation. I feel like we could sit here for the entire day and just peel back layer after layer of this. And I, I love that you're out there doing that. And I think for me, that's what I would like to see more people doing is not, not jumping on one way or the other, not like, Hey, I'm all in, I'm going to use this blindly without understanding where it might take me that I don't expect or sitting back and trying to resist it. Because I do think resisting this is a little futile. I think uh, I've seen, I've seen the videos of the freaking robot dogs up and down. And like, like, I think some crazy shit is coming our way yeah Let, but, let's talk about actually what the things i am scared about and i don't mind yeah. saying this out loud i'm not yeah. afraid of many things but the one thing that does freak me out a little bit is are the deep fakes um and deep fakes meaning the impersonating video and the and the voice yes. quality it's so good and today right. you the, posted the, that video that was crazy Sorry, and I interrupted. Just, Go ahead. No, yeah. no, I, I just literally want to just kind of throw out little things that, that people just start thinking about because that is something. Listen, AI is no more good or bad than than people are. Okay, right. I just want to say that very clearly. Right. AI in itself isn't inherently good or bad either one. It will get wielded good or bad depending on who's doing it. So right. I want more good people using it than bad people. It's just that simple. Right. And so there there is this really clear path for the deep fakes to run out of control. And to I'm nervous about how we're going to how we're going to be able to tell if yeah. I'm just honest. Right. Yeah. Is, how, how can we I tell? Think, I think the example for me that jumps to mind when you say that and when I saw your video is online predators, um, you know, like you already have these young, vulnerable kids chatting back and forth and sending people, what's to say that, you know, you couldn't get some 50 year old, 300 pound guy pretending to be a 16 year old kid wooing a 14 year old girl and getting her out to someplace like that. Like there yep. is a the potential for people like that to have. Yep. So I, I think that is a valid point. You just have to remember that whatever technology and information and tools we have, so does everybody else. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly right. And, and yeah. more because what we are getting access to as a society is a tiny fraction of what's in use and what's in play and what's available. Right. right. Okay. So the power and, and this is an exponential thing. And we have a really hard time when I say we meaning people, human beings, all of humanity have a real hard time comprehending exponential growth or exponential change. We can think very linearly. We can think sequentially. We can understand a, you know, a trajectory path that's straight, but an exponential change is really hard for us to understand. 
And that's what I'm trying to get people to really understand. The, we have today's fastest computer making tomorrow's fastest computer, making the next day's fastest computer. And it just this capacity for computation and, and for processing all these queries just goes faster and faster each day. And then the capacity to actually create new technology speeds up dramatically. And then the speed at which it hits the market speeds up dramatically day after day. So if you're feeling uneasy about it, it's real. It is a very right. like this. We're just not used to this sort of change of pace. And right. that's something I want to prepare people for. Like the next five years is going to be m probably faster advancement than the last hundred. And I'm, that's Crazy, not I don't right? I don't think that's yeah. really far off. So uh, be prepared for that and be OK with that, you know, and, and be ready to, to accept things that are going to be coming at you seeming like a fire hose. I was, that's exactly what I was just thinking of. Like it, it, we are being fire hosed with technology and that's both exciting. And to, I think based on current climate and seeing what happens with, you know, uh, how people are used, how much the good or evil of what happens with power is dependent on those who have it, you know, the, the whole absolute power corrupts absolutely kind of thing. So it's just a, do you think at some point there'll be restrictions on it? There'll be legislation involving this? Like who yeah, they're already talking what? about it. And that, honestly, that pisses yeah. me off. We have politicians that have never even logged uh -huh. into chat. You have any understanding that prepare to want to be the gatekeeper of how we're supposed to use it. They, they, they want to police our morality. I, I think, right. And I, and I do believe there needs to be some regulation and some real, real strong talks about how this is going to be safeguarded in some way. Um, but I'm, the people are jumping in right now. And I saw some conversations yesterday, especially in the left hand side, instantly was this control and dominating similar like we saw, you know, during the pandemic and lockdown. Right. And that is not the right way. You know, they have a gross misunderstanding of the product itself. They have a gross misunderstanding of business. They have a gross misunderstanding of reality. If I'm just going to stand on a soapbox for a second. And I, I want them to stay to stay away from this and have leaders free, freedom loving leaders in this country step up and step in here. And that's what, what we need to lead that way. What do you think are the implications if, say, like the far, I'll say the far left and, or the far right has absolute control over how this is implemented? I, I think if it goes way too far right, obviously, uh, then we could skate into a little bit of people then taking too much advantage because then there will be a rise of a tyrannical uh, individual that uses it, wield, wields it in some insane way that dominates a little bit too much. And, okay. and I'm going to say that because if you have a little bit of money right now, you have some smarts, uh, you have a good strategy, it's, it's powerful what you can do. So that makes me a little nervous. And uh, on the far left is they want to even tell my kids what to, what to it, like, the way they want to insert themselves into the family unit, into the schools, into their businesses, to me is utterly disgusting. And so yeah. I really want them to stay far away from thinking they could be the morality police. They've shown themselves right. to be terrible at policing morality. So stay away, you know, and, and I think that's why we need to be really strong and really diligent right now first before that starts to come out our way. It's going to be, it's going to be a wild few years, Eric, giddy up buttercup, man, because yeah. we're well, off. Is, Whether you know, I'm, I haven't worked 18 yeah. hour days like this. I, I think I only slept two yeah. hours last night. I, I just worked, work, work because this is the first time I have felt really small in a long time. Right. I feel really small in this space because the opportunity is just so massive. So because there's so much room, I feel like I can just breathe. And, and it's so exciting because because uh, I feel this very, very small for the first time in a long time. And to me, that's refreshing. So if I feel that way, that means that there is just so much opportunity for people to just wield this in a positive way. And that's not me being glass yeah. half full. It, it's li I'm just looking at saying if I can produce and make this company like I am. And by the way, I'm using Hoozy as a case study. So everything with this company I'm forming using AI products, AI branding, AI, you know, from logo creation and my marketing strategy to awesome. the formation. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm using so it as a case study. Where did the name Hoosie come from then? <laughs> well, so again, I was thinking about this whole wisdom thing and I was using AI and I was brainstorming. Like if I want to, if I want to promote the idea of wisdom, 
you know, let's talk about avatars and animals and colors and fonts and, and sayings. And, you know, I kind of started thinking about this owl, right? This owl I did to represent wisdom. And I was like, what does it sound like? Who's he? Okay. Or who, who? And I was like, well, what are some other words I can plan with that? And what can the logo be? So I came up with a logo with the eyes and some wings and, and who's he has mm-hmm. that voice. But it's also, if you look up what who's he means, it has to do with courageousness and it has to do with, 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 with love really. And, and I think that, you know, right now we need a lot of love and a lot of courage. And so I just yeah. I kind of baked it into the branding itself. Okay. Um, and there's some other things I'll, I'll talk about later with the name that I don't want to say too early. But yeah, that was that was okay. part of it was was finding a fun name that that also from the sound to the look to the feel to the deep meaning all was in alignment with what I'm talking about here. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So it's who's H-U-Z-I dot com that A.I of course you know, yeah. right? yeah. yeah, yeah. and i think part of me knew that but that's why i asked to make sure i'm not putting the wrong shit up there i'm hopping on um right now immediately and signing up for us to be betas and and i would encourage everybody listening to do the same or at least check it out follow eric pay attention to the ai that is out there eric you have another amazing amazing project that is going to be coming out at some point um, that documentary that you reference. Are you able to talk a little bit about that now? You want to hold it? Yeah, no, I'm happy okay, to. Okay. This is, okay. you, you know, we're talking about things that are important for society, I think. And, yeah. okay. and that's one of them, you know, so the documentary was, a was an exploration of what happened during 20, 2021 and 2022, the summer of love and, you know, going around and being filming over 200 of the protests and riots and rallies and, and interviewing and sitting down really truly with as many people as I could find on the far left and the far right and billionaires and homeless and everybody in between to get this story. Um, you know, it became, it became kind of my life's work. I'm I, to be honest with you. And I feel like I kind of bought myself a PhD in, in humanity with taking the years off and just diving around the country, um, discussing really important things. And, and unfortunately, um, it, <laughs> let me just some dark days. I'll just tell you that. And yeah. seeing that kind of violence night after night, seeing that kind of just deep rooted hatred, both for this country and for other people. And, you know, as a Marine, I can easily understand the idea of a foreign enemy, but the idea of a domestic enemy was foreign to me. And it took me a while to understand that there are generally, genuinely people in this country that, you know, want everything that I believe and hold to be important dead you know, and destroyed. And, um, that took me a bit to, to sort through and and figure out how to make sense of that. Um, but it's real. And I think the documentary is going to show exactly how little we learn from history and, and how much we repeat it over and over and over. And yet, um, I do see, um, some little glimmers of hope in there. And I, I hope the story is just the story. The documentary itself is not meant to be my opinion. It's, it, we, I drew with the team, we drew this infinity symbol. And what we knew that with most propaganda that's out there today and with most stories, they start at the beginning and then they lead you to a conclusion at the end. I didn't want that. We want that if anybody starts, you know, minute 14 or minute 48 or whatever, and they watch it to the end and then watch it to be, they come to the exact same conclusion if they watch it from the beginning to the end, because it's just a story. It's not something I wanted to be true or didn't want to be true. Um, it just shows everything for what it is. And I didn't make the heroes, the heroes, the bad guys, the bad guys, because it'll just be shown how it is. Reveals themselves. Yeah. Really reveals themselves. And so that's the journey that I hope people go on is to to decide that, um, that, that the way we decided to treat each other, that the way, the ease at which we we're led around by our emotions, um, how easy we were to be hijacked uh, intellectually and emotionally um, should serve as a huge warning sign for this next five years as things change like this. I, I see some direct parallels to how easy it was for people to be manipulated um, mm-hmm. during those times compared to what's coming up with technology. And, you know, we talk about freedom a lot, Barb. And, you know, I'm, that is what I think this country is founded on. But you can't be free if you can't control yourself. You know, and right. and we're so fucking free that people are choosing to be out of shape. They're choosing to be poor. They're choosing to be lazy. They're choosing to be uneducated. That's how fucking free we are. And and I think that there's an element that in order, if you want to be really free, you have to be have some fucking discipline. And and I think in business and with AI that if you have some discipline, 
and you're smart and you're committed to doing the right thing for yourself, your family, and the people around you, then you should use AI and you should use it to, to, to wield it and become powerful as hell. Um, way more powerful than you can now. I think it can, it can help you uh, increase your, your pr professionalism and your, and your execution like you've never seen before. So yeah. I didn't mean to go on a little rant there, but I, no, you know, no, I, that's why I asked the question. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I hope you let us know when that documentary is about to drop and where you're putting it so we can help you build up the, you know, the pre-release momentum that is always helpful and Thank for you. sure share it with our community and all, and all that, because I think you're doing really great, important things. And I think you're one of those rare people that just, instead of like out there all the time, I think you just disappear and go all into it and then come out and say, Hey, look what I've done when I've been gone. <laughs> kind of thing. I and did. So I, I saw, I worked on five different political campaigns. You know, I was helping all the way, you know, through the gubernatorial race here and, right. and, you know, it was writing strategies and, and all behind the scenes. And, and I, and that's what it takes. Um, yes. it, it takes people that, you know, put your fucking hands and feet to work where your mouth is, put your wallet yes. to work, you know, and yeah. instead of pointing fingers, um, there's nobody out yeah. there that's going to fix anything but us. And I know, I know that's why we're doing what we're doing to the best that we can do it. Like, I think we all just have to jump in where we can. And so I love the way you're jumping in. And I, I really so much appreciate that you said yes, when I reached out to you, so excited to share this. I think this has been fascinating. I could sit here with you all freaking day long yeah, and unpack yeah. everything, you know? Um, so I'll be tracking you and seeing what's up, uh, Eric. And so if people want to find out more about your company, where to go, how to get involved with this, how to learn more. You yeah, I just put up a quick, you know, while we started the production of, I said, all right, let me go ahead and start talking to some of my friends and family and just people are interested. And I know the business community. So I put up a little quick page and, um, you know, hundreds of people have already signed up for it and um, got some applications for some quality uh, potential employees. So please go to and, and and let me know if you have any questions or if you want to be part of any testing and and I value feedback right now as much as anything. So if there's people out there that would like to know if I could do a certain thing or would do a certain thing or how it could help them. Please put that in there. I'm going to start doing live um, demos essentially and kind of show just a process of how to work through a business uh, a business idea. I'm creating what's called a, you know an idea validation loop to where you can take your idea and expand it and then deepen it and then implement it. So it'll be it'll be both training the AI and training the people the users at the same time to elevate it all together. Um, one doesn't exist. You can't do one without the other. I don't think, I don't yeah. think we can have a really smart AI and really dumb people, right? We're the yeah. other way around. So I want to, want to yeah. level, keep that level. And yeah, I'd love to hear from people too. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Fascinating. Eric, thank you so much. Cheers.